Yeah, you should have seen the other guy. Yeah, no, that that was a joke. Now you can see why I was never really much of a comedian, right? Yep. Well, I am assuming you're calling to ask if I'm free or not. Yeah, well, I'm busy tonight, uh, tomorrow, and I think most of the next week of work, but I'll let you know if something comes up if whenever I'm free. Actually, wait, there is something I did kind of neglect to tell you. It's actually right here in my car. Uh, it's actually really important, so just hang tight. It's the hat, yeah. It's right here, right next to me. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bring it in this weekend. Yeah, I'll just grab it when my phone's done. Yeah, speaking of which, you can take all the time you need on it, seriously. I'm not picky. As long as it means getting this piece of garbage fixed, I'm fine. Yeah, I know, I'm basically killing myself dealing with all these phone issues. I'm just ready to get it fixed, for God's sake. I guess I gotta hang up soon. This thing probably won't put up with a phone call much longer, so... Yeah. I'll talk to you later, man. Yeah, see ya. Hello? With the help of God. Yeah, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm, I'm driving, man. What? Is this with Vince? Oh god, are you gonna fight again? What the hell do you mean pull over? Alright, I, I guess I'll pull over. Give me a second. Alright, yeah, I'm, I'm pulled over. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having a really hard time hearing you right now. Um, let me step out of the car real quick. Why'd you call this number? What? Why did you call this number? Brian, come on. I specifically told you not to call this number unless it's a work-related reason. Hence the name, a work phone, okay? No, listen, you probably need to know what I have to say. I promise you, dude, it is not that important to call me on this phone. Robert's dead. <sighs> Fuck, man, I'm sorry. But seriously, man, the phone- Shut up, Brian. Okay, Jesus Christ. Do you even know how he passed? Well, um, they said he went in his sleep. Died of natural causes, I think. Natural causes? Oh my god. That's so fucking untimely. Excuse me? Well, I don't know, man. Just like going to sleep and not waking up? I mean, I'd rather go out to cancer than have that happen to me. Hey, can I call you back? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Uh, hey man, uh, seeing as I'm your lawyer, I guess I have to, like, legally tell you that your dad was shot 27 times in the face. What? 
<laughs> Got him. Where's the scotch? Is it a bit early for that? Uh, you clearly don't know what time it is. Oh, fuck, you're right, it's five. Yep, and where's the scotch? Because you're gonna need it. Oh, really? Why's that? You know your brother's coming, right? Are you shitting me? Seriously? Yep, absolutely serious. Well, I mean, I, I assumed they were coming, but I didn't think they were coming now. You could have at least given me, like, a heads up so I can get the house ready and shit. Well, you should have, like, at least prepared a little bit because you would have, like, at least assumed that someone was coming. Well, I mean, yeah. But is this really what Dad would have wanted? Dude, he specifically asked in his will. That's why I'm here. <sighs> That's some serious bullshit. You know how much we fight. Hell, he knew how much we fought. There's seeds in these. Ew. Well, you're just gonna have to get over it because it's what your dad wanted. Jeez, wouldn't you like to see us all getting along together since you hate taking sides so much? Hey. Begins. Fuck off. Oh, false alarm. Hey, Eddie. Hey, it's been a while. Oh. How you been? Good. I uh, miss you at the bar mitzvah. Oh, yeah. Well, I tend to avoid those things. Last time I went, got as fat as yeah. a turkey. Uh -huh. Hey, Liam. Um, what? Hey. How's my favorite chef doing? You don't have a chef. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. It's good to see you. Uh, where's Vince? Oh, trust me. Medusa? Yeah, he's on his way as we speak. Okay. Uh, how long have you been calling him that? A little while now, you know, I like to change it up a bit. Uh, for a while it was uh, Pighead, it was Hades, Cracktick, that was one that really pissed him off. That's a good one. Uh, what's, what's Liam doing? Oh, he is looking for the solution to all of our problems. Alcohol. Exactly. Hmm. Speaking of which, how's the search going, Liam? A little bit better. Uh, still no scotch though. Um, actually... Do you know where those root beers are? How's that gonna help us? Get you off your lazy ass. All right. I thought you stopped drinking. I mean, I did, but I always kept a bottle around in case the dark times hit us. Vince? You know it. Oh yeah, how's Regina? Uh, about that. Oh um, boy, that didn't last long. No, it didn't. Uh, we, we talked. Well, she kept going out late at night. We talked, it didn't really. I don't know. We, we talked and... Uh, it yeah. Didn't, it didn't work out. Oh, I'm sorry so. to hear that, man. That always sucks when that happens. It happens. Uh, yeah. yeah. You got a place to stay? I I'm working on it. Um, oh. Could I, could I stay here? Oh, for uh, now? Uh, Just... I mean, yeah, maybe. Got the guest, uh, I, I know you've got the guest room if nobody's using it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, at least until you get back on your feet. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, you were right about that entire thing. You, you were right when you said it wasn't going to work out. Where's the shit? Uh, you know, I, I think it's downstairs. Why didn't you tell me that before? <laughs> well, I thought I had it up here. Dude, you should have told me that before I read your fucking fridge. <laughs> Jesus, Vince isn't even here yet and you're both about to explode. Well, that's because I am currently dealing with two very different conversations right now. Ben! What? Scotch! Find the damn scotch, Liam! Just calm down. It's, it's okay. Jeez. Oh, I think Vince is here. Fuck! right now. Uh, over there. What are you doing in the basement? Looking for alcohol for Quinn. Ah, Quinn, that's, that's him for you. Yeah. An emergency batch will finally come in handy. Excuse me, where are my manager? Yeah. Uh, oh, good. I missed you. Yeah, I missed you too. Yeah. Hey, Quinn. Long time no see, buddy. We had dinner like two Okay, that's ago. besides the point. I mean, the dinner was pretty good. Dad, Vince, I'm talking about oh. dad. I don't expect to be dead for a very long time. My health, sufficient. My mood, exemplary. Jesus Christ, is this a will or another fucking screenplay? Probably another screenplay. Shut it. Anyway, thus concludes my final wishes to my family, friends, and former lovers. He had many of those. Oh, shut it. This is only a copy of the finalized will, so if any of you has the original... Uh, okay. Then, anyway, if you guys find it, just 
let me know because someone, aka me, needs to know what the original draft looks like. All right? All right. Other than that, that's it, I believe. Well, I guess that's about everything I needed to hear. All right, anybody want a burger or? Well, you guys don't know? What? They have a memorial going for your dad. So like a dinner type thing. They got it over at the- Are you place fucking with... kidding me? I can't escape that motherfucker even in death. Just Vince, we're going. Bro. No questions asked. Oh I'm not gone. Listen, Vince, I get it. You don't really want to go. Hell, I don't even really want to go either. But there are people there who cared about dad, who care about us. It's the least we could do for them. Oh, it's the least we could do showing up for people. Showing up, oh, because it'll make us look good. No, not going. Yeah, it would look better for us to all go together. You'll look like a total asshole if you don't. Well, then I've done my job. Oh, my God. Vince, listen, even Liam's going. Huh? Even Liam's going, and that means I'm going to be going, which means all of us should be going. So, again, like I said, it's the least we can do for these people. I mean, you know, if you don't go, you'll be missing out on extended family and more extended family. Okay, fine. All right, fine. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go, and I'll see people I've never met before gather around, um, wallowing in self-pity and their own misery, talking about a guy who has never done one good thing in his entire life. Um, stroking his ego more than anybody ever did in his entire lifetime. So, no, Quinn, I am not going! Come on, really? Really? I'm actually here right now doing this? I can't believe I let you convince me for $20 to come here and do this. Vince, it's not that bad. No, Quinn, it's worse. Liam had no idea what he was talking Liam about. Liam knew. Nothing. Nothing about this. He knew nothing at all. They're blowing this thing way out of proportion. For God's sake, Vince, he's dead. But don't you think, you know, this, all of this stuff is a little much for a dead guy? No, I mean... They can do whatever they want with the memories they have of dead. It's not our place to say anything about what it. What about the... What about the guys building a statue of him in the park? I think that's just rumors. No, they're seriously building a statue of dad in Quake Park. Doesn't that make you a little mad, huh? Nope. It's dad's image. They can do whatever they want. What about this? This place. This documentary about Robert Corman. What about that, huh? Doesn't that make you a little bit pissed off? No, of course not. It's just showing Dad's influence, and you know what? I think it's pretty cool. Want to hear what it's called? What's it called? The Li- Well, I guess to answer your question, uh, life life isn't really what you, what you take. It's really what you get. And I, I really like giving, giving to the people what they need. The people who need those emotions to be expressed for them on screen that they get that and sometimes people don't even know they need these stories they're just so important and i, I really want to draw people's emotions out of them and make them feel something it's about life sorry hold on it's my wife what were we talking about i'm doing the interview Nobody, nobody at all could have ever known the impact of one, one small man from rural, small town Tennessee, born in 1968, could have had on the filmmaking industry. Known far and wide for his productions by filmmakers, crit critics, and auteurs alike, not one person could have predicted one small man could possibly have made something like made something like God fucking line it's my fucking line big voice really that's what you're gonna go with big voice we gotta change that right this is my set we're changing that line I don't care what you say we can change it good we're changing it thank big voice there's no rules to making movies. You do what you do. It's always been that way. Give me a marker. Shit. Give me okay. Look, there's not really anything special about it. There's, you, you have an idea and you, you just develop it a little bit and you turn it into something really special. And it should feel 
natural. It shouldn't feel forced. It's about having an idea and showing that idea to the people who need to see it. They need to show them the film. And I guess the reason it's so important to me is because when I was a kid, I watched so many movies. I knew everything about all of the people that were in those films, just like people know about me now. The, the thing that I'm thinking about is uh, how movies changed my life. And I want to change other people's lives. And I think I do it pretty damn well. Why are we even still here? Shit. Robert's first film, a couple of individuals, well, well produced, never really got the attention it deserved until later in his filmmaking career. His second film, The Collins Nest, although it proved extraordinarily well with test audiences, never really made it off the ground. And his third, terrible, terrible third film, Garbage Fire, is exactly what it sounds like. An absolute mess of characters, some god awful narration, and a hellish production schedule left this 34 year old filmmaker hurtling towards an early retirement. I swear to God, how hard is it to not hit me with the boom mic? I get that shit out of here. I Um, I remember the first time I met Robert. I think I was 17 years old. Yeah, I was 17. And, you know, he was such a big inspiration for me. And, you know, he was very insightful and very honest, which was, you know, really something that I needed. And, you know, as I progressively got, you know, more and more popular, more and more recognizable, people were always like, Brenna, you know, what, what was your inspiration for this? Or how did you come up with this? And I would always talk about Robert and how much he meant to me. And then one day, during a painting session of all things, Robert was granted a boon from the gods. Almost like a calling card from a higher force, it gave him the idea for what many considered to be his magnum opus. The Pig in the Lantern. See the film being as brilliant as it is with the lantern representing death and the pig representing life, you know, frankly it's a relationship that shouldn't have worked. I remember being in the edit room and being like, Robert, what the hell are you doing? But you know, it worked and it's still one of, you know, one of my biggest inspirations for all of my films after that point. Brenna. Brenna! What? Yeah, I mean, you can say what you want about the Pig of the Lantern being bizarre and everything, but like, Edith, I mean, the man literally has a movie where somebody gets turned into human soup and drank with the little, the little bits and the chunks. I mean, that's what I call bizarre. I mean, you have to be truly in a, in a different headspace to come up with that. I mean, human soup, it truly is one of the most bizarre moments in cinema, and you, you really have to be in a different headspace to to think about that, you know? Very subtle, Hollywood. The life and love of Robert Corman. What the fuck?
fuck does that even mean? Well, it's a long title, so it must be important. It's probably what the jack off writing it thought. Guys, do you think you could tone it down a little bit? We, we Eddie, just got here. I hope you only joined in this conversation just to throw petty insults as well. I, I know Vince is being an asshole, but you don't have to just... If I'm not an asshole, down. why else am I here, Eddie? Quinn, you're supposed to be the mediator. For the record, to... Eddie... Okay. It's my fault for bringing Vince in the first place. Well, it's mine too. Now so I am just... entitled to give less of a shit. Amen, brother. Where'd you get a flask from? Does that matter? Yes. <laughs> That's not even an answer to me. I wonder what Phillips. Philip! Philip Quinn, you know his name? Uh, yeah, I read the We article. can't Wait, humanize. Was... We can't humanize these Hollywood people. You didn't know his name? They don't. They don't care about any of us. We're in his house, and That's you didn't know his name. That's ironic coming from you, Vince. Look, some girl opened the door, it's a Bailey woman, walked us in, sat us at this table, and we've been sitting here for 30 minutes. Who does this Philip Stevens guy think he is? I met this blonde in like this really, really trashy dive bar outside of town. Like, it's 3 a.m. and like the food is garbage and it's, it's like close to that week, so you know how women are. Like, it's about 3 a.m. so she's starting to get real grippy <laughs> and the waiter comes by i ask him hey man what whatever happened to those like two hash browns i ordered because it's it's two hash browns i, I ordered two hash browns from this place because they're like garbage and whatever it's it's two it's 3 a.m i got two hash browns and the man's just like oh <laughs> it's gonna be like 15 minutes and like I ordered these hash browns like two hours ago and <laughs> you just and that's what you were saying. I have been with? sitting there for two hours with this stupid blood <laughs> just sitting and I'm just like are you serious <laughs> 15 minutes for, <laughs> for two hash browns <laughs> like, it's 15 minutes now it's gonna be like two more hours later <laughs> and the man it's two, it's just two hash browns. <laughs> it's, it's so crazy to me to have all three of the Corman brothers in one room, let alone my house, my house in my dining room. I do everything in here, man. And like, I got the Corman brothers. Like, you guys have no idea how much your dad meant to me. Yeah, I guess so, huh? <laughs> yeah, sure, Vince. Don't yeah, Vince me. I've never met you before. You don't even know my name. What do you mean you've never... Ha! So I guess the rumors are true. You are a scrawny little shit then, aren't you? You should have known I would have beat the shit out of you in that fucking park. <laughs> sure you you should have known I would have beat what, you. I would have known. Hold on, Vince. What parking, what you parking lot? Well, he was out there in a parking lot one day. I don't know, some Denny's or some Tell shit, and he had his camera out there. And he was like, oh, Vince, what about this? Oh, Vince, what about that? Tell him about the parking lot. Yeah, that's right. When did you were up in my face. I told you to leave me alone, and you didn't leave me alone. I had questions for you to answer. And I didn't want to answer them. I didn't want to answer my questions. I didn't want you to answer my questions. You're dead I don't care about your fucking I heard somebody doesn't have an apartment anymore. Um, yeah, I, I don't have, well, a girlfriend anymore either. I, the entire thing with Regina. Yeah, know, so I heard. Break up. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, guess I know. So. Yeah. I know Quinn offered up his place to you. Yeah. That's what he, he mentioned that, but, you know, he's his own guy, you get me, but. Yeah. I would be more than willing for you to come and stay with me at my place. I mean, this, this, you know, I could use the company. It's, it would be nice to see, yeah, to see you more. Um, I, yeah, I, I think I've just got to do my own thing. I don't really know what I'm gonna do quite yet. I just, um, you know, Dad always said that I need to yeah. try to go on my own. Well, I just mean, do my think, do things for myself, you know. Well, Dad did things for himself, and look where it, he ended up. What? He's respected by like nearly everybody. I don't. No, you get the point. You get him. the point. He's he's dead. Yeah, but okay, uh, that's not what it, I don't think. That's what killed him. Look, I'm not like Dad. No, you and I are not like Dad. Yeah. Quinn, yes, obviously, <laughs> but no, I'm I'm we're not like Dad. Is it decided then? Shake on. Okay. okay. You know, I always had my suspicions about Regina. Oh, for... shut it. I. 
I told you so. Quinn did the exact same thing. I told you so. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. No, I promise it's not a problem. I got it. Don't worry. Okay. All right. Love you too. Bye. Hey, mind if I bother you? No, take a seat. Okay. I'm sorry, it's just... It's a lot going on in there. I get it. He's a lot to take in at first. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, I'm such an idiot. You're like a corpsman, aren't you? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I go by Eddie, but... Yeah. I'm Bailey. Your father's film, The Horsemanship, that was one of my favorites growing up. Yeah, it's a lot of people's favorites. Uh, it's my favorite, too, matter of fact. Um, Want to hear something cool about it? Yeah, of course. Um, okay, so, in the original ending, you know, uh, my dad was like, okay, let's just kill off the horse. He's not needed. It doesn't really matter, right? Um, and then me, like, super young me, super young Eddie, he's like, hey, hey, what... Hey, what if the horse just left? What if it didn't have to die? Um, I don't know why he was telling the entire script to like a super young kid, but, but I mean, but he actually took my advice. He was like, okay. Um, and he re rewrote the entire script. Oh, wow. He had to reshoot scenes, all that, um, just to make the horse leave at the end. And so it didn't have to die. Well, that explains why you were credited at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah, I was. You must have only been like six or something, right? Six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> why? Philip! What? Philip! Come downstairs. You know I can't hear you when you're up there. What are you, my fucking mom? I was looking for the hat. Since when do you wear a hat? Since when do you care about what I wear? You're right. Since when did I? You know I meant that in the least demeaning way possible. Oh, can you just not be a dick for once? This is just like that time with your mother when. Really? You're bringing up. Quinn, hey! Oh. Hey, Bretta. How's it going? Yeah, it's been going all right. Man, it's been a while. Yeah, it really has. I mean, total shock when I heard the news. Oh, yeah, I mean... You know, I'm so upset by the loss of your father. He was, you know, one of my biggest inspirations. Well, yeah, thanks for the kind words. <laughs> I mean, and you should truly believe everything that he said. You know, he was a man of such deep intelligence. Mm -hmm. and you... Vince! Oh, hey, Vince! Guys! What the fuck are you doing? Hey, freaking... I'm gonna fucking kill you! Man. You know, Vince, I thought when you said you were gonna get in a fight tonight in the car, you were kidding. With all due respect, Quinn, I'm not very funny, so why would I start comedy now? God, God, that was insane. I turned around and your face is fucking pale. You're <laughs> not mad? No. I'm gonna be honest here, 100%. Yeah. He had it coming to him. <laughs> oh yeah, no shit. Yeah. Oh, look at me, look at me, Philip Stevens. 50 minutes for hash browns. What an ass. What an egotist. You know what? Yeah, this... I miss this a lot. What do you mean? You know, hanging out with you. Like we used to be, you know. Really close. Just got to see you a lot, you know, when we were in college, you know. We, we we never saw each other. We, we never went out. We never... Yeah, you and I just went our separate ways and we just kind of drifted. Yeah, and that was that. You know, we should go out tonight. Just you and I. Take on the town again, like the old times. Well, you know, I, I, I'd love to, but I already have plans with Brian tonight. No, hang out with your real best friend, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, man. No, you know what? I'll give Brian a call. He'll understand. We can just reschedule it for another night. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I, you don't you don't have to do that from me. No, no, Vince, I'm serious. I get that. You know, it's been so long since we've connected and we haven't talked in ugh, months. And you know, let's just keep it going. Brian, Brian can wait. I see him all the time. All right, that sounds good. We should probably tell Eddie though. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually. I think it's probably best you don't go back in. I think it's probably best we both don't go back in. Yeah, let Eddie have his fun. There's a door over there. Let's get out of here. Yeah. So he ran, what was it, 17 blocks? <laughs> yeah, with 17. the first two, just so that she would pay the entrance fee in the end. It was crazy. Wow. <laughs> Seems like he really loved her then, huh? Yeah, my dad cared about her a lot. Yeah. But what about you and your brothers? There must be something there, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, things got kind of weird after school. Um, we kind of grew apart a little bit. Uh, Vince got angrier. Um, Quinn got less fun, distant, and um, I don't know. Well, then what happened? Then Dad died. Uh, 
now we're here. Shame. But. I can't imagine you guys in college, though. <laughs> you were probably so lively and fun. Quinn, maybe not so much, but yeah. Um, definitely, I've, I think I've got some fun left in me. Yeah. <laughs> sure, whatever you say. <laughs> You mentioned your dad's brother, though. What happened to him? Oh, yeah, Charlie. Um, I don't know. He, so, I mean, he moved away. Um, my dad always said he, he felt like he wasn't very happy with himself. And uh, he moved around a lot, east and west and wherever he went. And then, um, I don't know. <laughs> I really hate saying this, but the funeral dinner for your dad, it wasn't horrible. <laughs> Whatever you say. Hey, I'll give you a call sometime, all right? Okay. I'll see you around. All right, bye. Shit. Hey, um, <laughs> just a sec. What's up? Um, by any chance, uh, are you free tonight? Um, I'm free at 8.30 around that. So would you okay. want to meet at Quick Park? 8.30, 8 um, Quick Park. Yeah. Yes, yes, I, I know where that is. Great. Um, but if you and your brothers are like planning to do something oh, then... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, they'll be alright. It's fine. Well, if you're sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna leave for real now. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you then. Alright. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> hey! Oh, hey! How um, are you? I'm alright, how are you? I'm doing okay. Okay, that's So, good. what do you have planned for us tonight? I don't know. I mean, well, I mean, I, I figured we could just walk around. There's plenty of places we can go to. That sounds uh, great. Okay. 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 I just want to make sure. Because... No, it's totally good with me. All right. Should All we right. go? Yeah. No, All right. Yeah, Eighteen dollars for a bowl of sushi? For a burger? Jesus! Oh my God! Can I get paid for three drinks with that money? Yeah. I mean, they gotta pay their employees here somehow. Speaking of employees, where is everybody? You should have just gone to chips, man. Yeah. If somebody doesn't come here in like three seconds, I'm walking out the door. Eh, well, you could just be polite and ask. Yeah, fuck it. Can I get a drink? Somebody? There's a great burgers place down here. Do you like burgers? Yes. Oh, I love burgers. Oh, yes. But I, um, which one? I, I've been to a few places around here. So, this place, they've got really good food. You know my favorite thing there? They have these malts. And they mix in, here's their secret, they put salt in with the chocolate. So I it's got that. like a sweet, salty kind of mixture taste. It's okay. so good. It's genius when they do that. It's a good idea. I can't believe it. They're actually bearable right now. It's a miracle. Sometimes, when I'm drunk, I like to think about Dad and how Dad would see the world. Like an arrogant asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking and dad? That's two things I never thought I'd do together. <laughs> no! What would you think? <laughs> what are you doing on the ground anyway? It's spacious down here, man. I can move around if I want to. You should come down. Mm. Get off that chair. Mwah. Mm. Where are you? Oh, dude. Hey. You remember that one time that Dad almost died of an asthma attack? Oh yeah, it was at a, a premiere of something. I can't remember. Hey, didn't you almost die of an asthma attack too when we were kids at school? Oh yeah, I remember that. We were we were in school. Did you did you see Charlie today? What? Did you you know see? Him today, Charlie, but he wasn't supposed to be here till like tomorrow, I think. Yeah, tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah. What else have you not told me? Uh, let me think. Um, oh, oh, this one's a funny one. Uh, you know, the original draft of the will, <laughs> yeah, what about it? <laughs> Turns out. I have the original draft saved to my computer. What, wait, wait a second. Didn't Liam ask us about this today? When did you remember this? It was earlier tonight when we were having the dinner. And I was just thinking to myself, I was like, oh, shit, we still have it. Uh, too late now, I guess. <laughs> Is that why you've been so nice to me? You know, we really should have just gone to a food shack, man. My head hurts. Hurts.
So yeah. when do you think you'll be free from all this funeral nonsense and we can do something like this again? Um, I don't know, in a couple days maybe? I, I mean, I haven't looked, I, I guess, I don't really know. You know, that reminds me. I wanted to go to that art place we passed earlier, but I'm not going to have time. I mean, it's okay. It's something for another time, right? You're right. Yeah. So, I'll okay. see you around, I guess? Yeah. And I'll give you a call, too, so we can try and plan something. Oh, okay. And okay. maybe we'll actually plan it this time. Yeah, okay. That's fine. All right. I'll see you around. I'll right? right, see you around. All right. All right. You okay? Hey. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Nothing I'm gonna say is gonna make you magically feel better. And I know that's pretty dark of me to say, but it's the truth. I mean, losing someone is hard and I don't know. It's hard for a while, you know, you just, you never quite get used to them being gone, but it does get easier. Maybe not at first. I know when I lost my dad, it took me a while to get used to it, but it'll get easier as it goes on and you'll feel better. Everything's going to be okay. Come on, let's not end this on a bad note. Okay. There's a pie shop like Two stores down, and it's super good. We should go see if it's open. Is it open? Oh. I think. Okay. I'll pay, I promise. Uh, I mean, I could pay. I... I brought my wallet, you paid for dinner, I'm paying for dessert. No, I mean. <laughs> uh oh. It looks closed. Oh, is it? Ah. Uh... And it's so pretty with these lights on, usually. Yeah, I wish That's I could smash every single one of these lights. <laughs> and then what? Eat the glass? I well, bet I should... am gonna get kidnapped. Well, we should at least sit down here for a while, if it's not open. I mean, it's got a welcome sign. I'm sure we could break in. Break in and enter? Are you joking? I mean, we could, like, walk in. Maybe it's locked. Maybe it's Get in! Where were you? Home. Quinn and I were completely wasted after last night, but that's not the point. Okay. I thought you were coming to pick me up. Well, why didn't you have your date take you home? Because I thought you were going to pick me Do up. Do you remember 
the original draft of the will that Liam was talking about. Wait, it out just a question, Vince. No, seriously. I found it, and I read it. Last night. Where, where, where did you find it? Quinn had it. And he didn't tell us? He told me. Blackout drunk. So, what's so important about the original will? What's so important is that Dad never wanted a funeral. H how do you know that? Eddie, God damn it! it was written on the first page of the fucking thing. Why didn't he want a funeral? Because he wanted to be cremated. Shit, really? Yeah. Huh. Now do you see why this is so important? But you of all people hated Dad the most. I yes, know. I do. I fucking hate Dad. I loathe him. Okay. He's dead. But I think it's time we accept what he wrote. What he wanted in his death. It's not just about us. It's about... It, it's a the dead man's wish. I mean... I'm an asshole. I know that. I mean, what kind of person would I be if I didn't? But I'd like to think even I have boundaries, Eddie. That's what separates me from those fucking documentarians out in the parking lot with their cameras and they're running around. Fucking parking lots, Eddie. They have no fucking boundaries. I'm not like them. That's the problem. What, what could we even do about this? The way I see it, Quinn's still dead on the couch. And once he gets up, he probably won't want to move. So, let's say you and I go and get Dad's body ourselves. Jesus Christ. How, how would that even work? There's going to be so many people. Not this early. If we sneak in now, we can get in practically unnoticed. And if we get caught, you know, we'll just lie through our teeth. <laughs> I mean, it always seems to work for me. No, all right. But... That's still crazy. Get in. Get out. Get in McQuinn's place. And give him the cremation he wanted. If we get caught, it's your fault. Come on, I'm not all day. Are you sure about this though? I, I really don't think. No, don't don't worry about it. No one's gonna be here. Look at this parking lot. It's empty. There's still cars here. It's yeah. not empty. You're you're the one who agreed to do this, by the way. You're the one who suggested it. Well that's what's, true. What's your but point? That's, well, you were you were the one that slept on a fucking stairwell last night, Eddie. Yeah, because you didn't pick me up. I, I didn't I didn't pick you up. You think I would have picked you up drunk, Eddie. You were you just Eddie, said I'm the good guy drunk. here, Eddie. I'm the good guy. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Okay. All right. Jesus. All right. All right. All right. See, see, see. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. No one is here right now. No one is here right now. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. All right. Fine. Look at me. Look at me in the eyes right now. Look at me. Look at me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You see me? Yes. Look at me right now in the eyes and tell me it's gonna be okay. What are you doing? You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. Okay. Okay, Vince. I, I'll do it. I just. <sighs> okay, I mean... Okay. Hey. Yeah. You're gonna do it, okay? Okay. Just focus on the one thing and nothing else. Right. I'll deal with everything else. Okay. That's, my, that's my purpose. Okay. Here. You go that way, I'll go this way, okay? All right. All right. Good for him. Oh, no, oh, Vince, hey! Oh, hey! Man, this must be such a hard time for you and your brothers. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been rough. Uh, Quinn and Eddie have been at home. They've had a they've had a long. They night. must be feeling awful. Yeah. How are you feeling? Um, pretty. Um, not very, not great. No, it's been it's mm. been very rough.
understandable. It is such a you know deep and emotional time for you guys to navigate. Although I do have something I wanted to ask you about. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Go ahead, shoot. Do you know the filmmaker Philip Stevens? I, I don't have a single clue who that guy is. Well, he's making a documentary about your father's life. Wait, really? Yeah. <laughs> Just him? Just the one guy doing everything? Yep. You know, writing, directing, producing, starring in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's admirable, I guess. Yeah, it is, but he was wondering if you could be interviewed for it. You know, he asked me to ask you because you weren't <laughs> the kindest to him the last time you guys spoke. Oh yeah, Lord knows I wasn't very kind to him the last time. So what do you think? Um, well, maybe I could, well, maybe I yeah. could do, do something. I, I mean, I, I have a busy, you know, I'm on my right. plate, busy schedule. I mean, maybe we could, you know, meet sometime to just talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I, um, yeah, we could, we could meet yeah. and, and, you know, so get out for coffee or something and yeah, of talk about it. You know, I can, you know, Give you a call. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think so. Yeah, that sounds like a that sounds like a plan. All yeah. right, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, tell Philip. No, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> I'll be seeing you then. Yeah. See you. Yeah. I think we got it! Yeah, no shit! Fucking Vince, what the She's fuck? Shut the fuck up and run! Did anybody see you? She's not the kind sure! Down for long. She knows and plays it smart. She feels like leaving and she don't know why. Without no bridges, she's got so Fucking, I can feel the adrenaline fucking running through it. We did it. We fucking stole that body. We did it. Oh, man. Nah, yeah, whatever. Right. Harden is a fucking understatement. You know I saw Brenna Hopkins in there? What the fuck? Just calm down. Hey. What's up? Hey, Brian. How, are you, How you doing? Uh, we're going back. You're going home. We're just yeah, stopping yeah. by. Yeah. Okay. Is Quinn in the car? Um, no, no, he's he, passed he's, out. He's passed out whole cold passed on the out. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. on the couch. Uh, what are you doing here, Brian? Something. You have something in your trunk? Hey, what? No. I can't. What? I can't hear you. What? 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 Just try. What are you doing? Try it. Try it. Hell yeah, bitch! The fuck? Let's go! You told jackasses when? that you can set a fire when? on Calm my down. damn property! Okay. Fuck! What the fuck? Fuck! What the fuck, fuck are you man. Doing? What the fuck right. was that for, man? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because you set a fucking bonfire in my backyard? Well, guess what? Liam called, huh? What about Liam? What the hell does he want? He found the original draft. Remember that? He was mentioning yesterday? The, the entire original transcript. Well, what the hell did it say? He wanted to be cremated. Dad? That's what he wanted? That He wanted that back there? Set on fire? Yes. Yeah. So he found the will, got the body back, and burned well, it in my yard? Well, they gave it to us yeah, back, but that... Everybody's gone. Yeah. It's, the funeral's off. It's, it's, they called it all. So it's all, it, this is it. This is what dad wanted.
So, is anyone going to say something? No, Just be quiet. Probably, probably not. No. No, I'm serious. Someone should, like, say something. Okay, I'll say something. Shut the fuck up. All right, Jesus. Trying to. Just You're better than this. I know you are. Hey Vince, who was that you were talking to earlier today? Oh, you mean Brenna? Get out of here. You did not talk to Brenna Hopkins. Well, Quinn, you see, you're not the only one who can talk to famous people. Didn't she ask you out for coffee? Wait, wait, wait. She asked you, Vince Corman, out for coffee? I freaking wish. It was Philip Stevens. <laughs> what? <laughs> he set Brenna up to. <laughs> fucking dick. How does that happen? <sighs> fucking... Some documentary thing. I don't know, he wants, wants me involved. But I don't get the fucking deal. This this Philip Stevens guy, he's just like dad. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 he, he is, he is, he is, he is. They're both egotistical, self-indulging pricks. She ran into me at the reception this morning. <laughs> she ran into you? Or did you? run into her. You think I'd actually knowingly talk to Brenna Hopkins? I mean, you know how famous she is, right? I mean, yeah. I'd have to be crazy to do that. You got 20. You keep giving me 21. Just give me I, something else. I actually want to play gave, the game this got, time, Eddie. I want to play the game this time, You got Eddie. a queen and an ace. I don't give you better cards. That is like the best game you can get. Card. Hey, Vince. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just rehearsing for my speech tonight. Speeches? I thought we weren't doing those anymore. Well, you know, I, I, I wrote something that truly means something to me. Oh, really? About Dad? Read it. Oh, God. Vince, this is absolutely disgusting. And exactly what he deserves for making me carry his moldy dead body this morning. Oh, hello? Hello? <laughs> is this thing on? Is, is everything good? You're not on a podium, Eddie. It's just, it's You're just, not on the podium. it's acting, it's, it's acting, it's, just it's, go, just come on. So, you want me to talk about my dad, huh? Oh boy, where do I start, jeez. I, I miss the, I miss the walks we used to take, uh, my dad and I, uh, we used to go and we used to walk every weekend, actually, it'd be, um, we used to walk by, uh, by the forest. I mean, there's not much you can do. I mean, there wasn't any beaches, certainly, so it was I mean, a lot of forests. It was a lot of forest walks. You know, one thing I do remember is that he was a decent cook. I mean, he made some garbage. Garbage human being. And then we stopped. We, we stopped the walks. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what happened with the walks. We, we did them, like, every weekend from about, like, first to second grade. We did the walks. We, it made me so happy, the walks. You know, for a guy who makes movies, he, they weren't total garbage fires. Most of his films are awful, pretentious shit fests that pretend to mean like they're they're all the shit. They mean something, but no, they don't mean anything because he tries too hard for them to mean something. We we take the walk and then uh, he'd be like, okay, I gotta go, I gotta go back inside, um, and then he'd he'd go away and disappear for a while, and then I wouldn't see him until a few days later. I don't know what he did. I don't. I mean, some were definitely bad, like, really bad. A robot can make better movies than he could. See, we'd stop the walks. See, we, we did the walks every single weekend from like first to second grade. <laughs> Where did he stop the walks? Why didn't he stop the walks? Was it me? Was, was it dad? Was it the alcohol? Hell, I could make better movies than he could. Dad was the most caring, loving, happy. He was, he was just, he was the biggest. Man whore. I've ever seen, like, I've never seen somebody, like, practically give away their body. Like, so, so, he and I went to a restaurant one time. I can't remember. 
years ago. And the waitress comes up to him, and she's like, okay, what do you want? And he's like, I'll have my usual. And th th they make eye contact. And then he disappears into the restroom for 30 minutes. What kind of person does that to a kid? I mean, what kind of person? You know, looking back, there was one really good memory that I do have of Dad. Uh, it was seventh grade. I was having the standard crappy middle school day. Nothing was going right, and to top it all off, I just got called down to the office, and I didn't know what I did wrong. And I saw Dad sitting there, and he puts his hand on my shoulder, and he says, Quinn, we're going fishing for the week. And next thing I knew, I was called off for the next two days of school, and we spent that weekend going up to Lake Michigan, and we went fishing. I'll never forget the smile he had on his face. Um, it's the only genuine smile I think I've ever seen on that man. Um, my father, Robert Corman, had a lot of sides. He had the pretentious filmmaker, the drunkard, and a man who couldn't maintain a healthy relationship for if his life depended on it. I mean, if you don't believe me, just ask my brothers. But at that moment, the side I saw to Robert Corman was my father. That was the person I saw. And that's who I want to remember him for. For all of his faults put aside, that's Robert Corman. Well, it looks like he's already out there. He is? Yeah. Oh, did you grab anything for the ashes or whatever? Why would I... There's a he fucking doesn't... dead man out there. Did you... Why would I think of that? Well, well, he doesn't have one. Okay. Just I'll... grab the first thing off the table. Okay. Jesus. Dad. You weren't a great man. I don't even think you were a very good man. Uh, you were pretty flawed. You were pretty flawed. Um, I mean, yeah. maybe that counts for something. Uh, I mean, yeah. he probably did good things. I wasn't there for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So here's to a man uh, flawed and as troubled as they come. Just uh, goodbye. I think that's the best I can do. I don't know. Well, that was a little um, uh, anticlimactic. Well, he couldn't have gone any other way. That is true. I need a fucking drink. I agree. I'm with you on that one. All right. I'll tell you, Brian, it's been crazy. It's only been two days. Here, I thought you couldn't catch a break when your dad was alive. You know what? I'm glad we didn't go last night. Food was shit last time we went anyways. It wasn't even that bad. It was always pretty good when me and Sophie went there. How is she, by the way? She's alright. I'm trying to work less, but it's not really working out well for me. I mean, you're trying. No. So, why were Vince and Eddie at the reception this morning? Wait, what? Yeah, I, I went there this morning, and they were both in Vince's car. Well, I mean, the original draft was found. There were no changes to the reception from what I heard. Well, yeah, actually there was. Um, apparently, Dad wanted to be cremated, so they took him and cremated him this morning. What? What do you mean? They cremated him? Yeah, like cremated him. Burnt. Why? Because that's what he wanted. That was in his will. When did that happen? Earlier today. They were just here. How did that even change? He's dead. How did that... Did he write that? I guess so. Look, when he was dead? Yeah, look, I mentioned I had the original draft of the will at the dinner last night. But, you know, I didn't read it. Maybe Vince read it. I don't know. Dude, I'm sick and tired of Vince walking all over you. He does this without even feeling he's going to be punished. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe Vince is right on this one, Brian. I mean, you know, maybe, we sh maybe I should have read it and understood it, you know. Do you hate your dad? No, of course not. I don't hate him. Okay. Let me get this straight, Quinn. So your brother Vince comes here, comes into your house, cancels our plans, then he abducts your dead father, cremates him, and now he's making some big speech at the reception, saying how terrible of a person he was. Is that right? Well, I mean, when you put it that way, Brian... Quinn, you've got to open your eyes. I... 
did not like my father, but he did not want me to fail in the ways that he failed. So, what I'm thinking is that it does not matter how Eddie and how Vince feel about your dad. It just matters how you feel about him. You know what, Brian? Let's go crash this fucking funeral. Leave me alone. Leave me alone? Oh, what? So now you can't stand to be around me anymore? Just take you and your goon and get out. Oh, you know what? That's actually kind of funny because last time I checked, I was out the one. Last time I checked, it's none of your goddamn business. Hey, you guys, what's going on? What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, I don't know. What the fuck is wrong with you? Since when the hell have you started caring about dad and what he wants? It's a dead man's wish! That kind of thing doesn't change, Quinn. It never changes. Oh, look at you, Vince, trying to be some kind of high horse, acting like someone who cares when he doesn't. What about Charlie, huh? What? Oh, God. Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. Uh, Dad's stupid brother that didn't show up to any of this shit. Where was he during the fucking dinners and the speeches and the people crying and moaning and bitching their eyes out? And you made me come to all of that? Why? Why do you care about that? Oh, I don't know. I mean, why are you acting like you care now? Why didn't you act like you cared then? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because you only care about yourself. No, 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 no. Don't confuse you with me. You maybe come to the dinners because it cared about how you look. Y you want Eddie to move in with you because th it makes you look good. Wait, 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 wait. You guys didn't make a decision about that, did you? I I'm Without just gonna me? move in with Vince. Shut up! You don't have a say in this. You're the fucking homeless one here. Kind of why does it matter to you? Why, why does it matter that he moves in that? with Vince, me anyway? You're an asshole. You're an asshole. You go behind other people's back to get what you want, and you lie through your fucking teeth. So does he? Why do you like him again? That's not I, I don't. You're all brothers. Yes, I understand that. That's why I'm gonna move in with him. He's my brother. Yeah. I don't understand what the fucking problem is. I don't understand any. Why do you stand with this idiot? Well, he actually looked at the will. Did you even look at the will? How about oh, that, yeah. Quinn? How, why didn't oh, you look at the will? You know what? Why didn't how about you look at it? Vince stands here and tells us how much he hates, how much he fucking loathes Dad to his very soul, how he <sighs> disgusts him. Alright, guys. Oh, fucking Christ, what is your problem? What are you doing? Hey, come on, hey, come on. Hey, chill. Stop. Eddie's already uh, heading up to my place. He's been hanging out with the uh, Bailey girl, though. She seems nice enough. I'm just glad he finally met someone who likes him for who he is. Ain't that the truth? I'm sorry about the uh, whole Eddie moving situation. If you're sorry, then why'd you go behind my back about it? Well, when I talked to him about it, he told me that you didn't seem like you were very interested, so I offered my place as a second arrangement, and he seemed to go with that better, I think. I read the original draft of the will, you know. I'm sorry. You were right, Vince. Dad did want to be cremated. I just... I just can't shake this feeling, though. It's just... From cremation to burial, it just seemed like such a drastic change. I don't know, it feels like they wanted to get more press attention or something. I mean, Philip Stevens is making a whole documentary. I thought it was a Hollywood thing. No, it's just him. Weird. Yeah. Do you know why I hate Dad? What? Do you know why I hate Dad? I heard what you said, Vince. It's just... Never really expected you to want to open up about it. I mean, it's... It's kind of weird, to be honest. It's... I... 
when we were young, Dad always spent a lot of time with Eddie. And when he left Eliza and had you, he just spent a lot of time with you. And he just, you know, you know, he just, he just like, like when somebody's there with you and you don't acknowledge their existence or anything they say, they're just there. I mean, I, I wanted to write with them. I wanted to, I wanted to do movies with them and he, he didn't give a shit. He didn't care. He didn't want me to write with him. He was just telling me that. Even when I did find success in business, he didn't care. He didn't care about any of that. He just, he just had to let me in, Quinn. He couldn't do that to his own son. He couldn't do that to his own flesh and blood. He couldn't let me in. If he couldn't love me, his own flesh and blood, no one else deserves to love him as much as I ever did. I, uh... I bet this is exactly what you wanted, huh? To see me as uh, vulnerable as I do now. Uh, I'll catch up with you some other time. You didn't tell me the uh, the light would be that bright, geez. It's, oh. It's, uh, oh. It's, um, um, hello. I'm, uh, my name is Vince, Vince Corman. Um, you, you know why we're here. My dad, he's, he's, he's gone. He's not here with us anymore. Um, he, um, jeez, that light is really, oh, um, that, that, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blanking out a little bit, um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I don't, this thing bothers me, I'd better, I'm gonna hold it, um, I don't know. I I had a long speech I had prepared to say um, about my dad, but I don't think he deserves any of it. Let alone deserves me speaking at his funeral after how horribly he treated me. Even to mock him and to ridicule him. I just think that's, you know, I just think he doesn't even deserve that. I, um, I got to, I got to see him, got to see him less and less as I got older. I, I, uh, I really did not want to be around him. I thought he was a bitter, bitter old man. <laughs> he was only 46. <laughs> I mean, uh... I, um... I remember the last time I talked to my dad. 
Um, it was a phone call because I never wanted to be around him ever. But it was strange because he never really called me to begin with. But I, um, I picked up and he started asking me about He started asking me about work, which he never did. He never cared about anything I did, but, you know, I should have known something was wrong when he sounded genuinely interested in what I had to, to say. And, you know, he talked to me about the apartment and talked to me about, you know, life. And then he, uh, he said bye. He just kind of left. He, um, never even said I don't want to be here anymore. I'm sorry. I, uh... I'm sorry, I... 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 I can't... So we were trying to get the mattress in through the door, and and by that point we had tried three different ways wait, to get wait, it in. Wait, 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 where was I during this? You you were out with Bailey in the in the car trying to uh, moving lamps out. God, I still don't remember. Anyway, we figured out a fourth way, and we bent the mattress in half. But when we went through the door, the mattress whipped back, hit me in the shoulder, and put a big <laughs> dent in the wall. It wasn't that funny. My it's, shoulder still hurts from that. It's, it's hilarious, man. No. It's not that funny. It's pretty funny. Oh, yeah. Uh, how'd that interview for the documentary go? Did you make it in? What documentary? Philip Stevens. Oh. Mm. <laughs> um. So, tell me, what's the most vivid memory you have of your father? Um, we were uh, at the fair, I think. And we were playing some kind of dart game. You know, the ones with the, with the balloons. Um, and you know, I, I want, there was a prize there that I wanted, and, you know, when he couldn't win it, I mean, I started to cry, because, you know, I was a kid. Wait, so what did he, what did he do? Oh, he hit me right in the face, of course. Did he call the hospital? No. What the fuck? Did he care that you got hurt? No. Did he apologize? No. Hold on, what the fuck, what did he do? Well, I mean, he just hit me again. Oh, it, was my, it was my favorite shirt, too. This is oh. disgusting. We're doing this again. I think I'll make it in. Nice. Congrats, man. Thank you. Did you get your phone back from Jamie yet? I think you still have his hat, too, right? You I told do. me that. Yeah, I'm going to give that to him as well. Okay, all right. Did you hear about a certain report for Robert Corman's missing body? Yes, Vince, I heard all about it. Can't you believe a certain someone convinced them that some shady guy showed up before the funeral and stole Robert Corman's dead body? That's what you told them? That makes zero sense. Well, I mean, when the media found out about that, they thought it was like the greatest thing in the whole world. And, well, that's the story they ran with, so... Really? Yep. That's funny, Quinn. You know, actually... I did end up telling Liam about the will. How did that go? Well, he looked at it and he said, really, only minor things were changed. <sighs> you know, except for the whole cremation part. Oh boy. You wanna know what he said? What did he say? 
He said he was glad the body was stolen. <laughs> I didn't think it'd be that funny. Uh, you know, it's funnier than the statue they're building of Robert Corman in Quake Park. God, they're still doing that? Yep. I mean, it's like you said at the dinner. I mean, we, we can't control what they do with Dad's image, whether that be the documentary or the funerals or the... Well, the statue, I'm just gonna, you know, be a, a normal person and just, you know, vandalize the statue when they put it up. So, um, how you feeling? Better, I think. You? I don't know. Feels like nothing's changed. Really? Yeah, I mean... Ever since Dad's funeral, things just felt different for me. I don't really know how to put it in the words. It's just, I guess the easiest way to explain it is that I haven't fully healed yet. I mean, it, it doesn't happen overnight like that. It, it takes time, you know? It takes time to to bounce back from from something like this and you know it it doesn't happen right away sometimes it, it happens when when you don't want it to and the grief it just overcomes you it just it it takes you and you can't do anything about it and sometimes it it just it was like when I went up to uh, give my speech, I mean, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know I was going to feel the way I did. What went through your head? I don't know. I, I think I felt something for him. I think I felt pity. Maybe it was knowing that his three sons, who hadn't been close in years, only got together to see one another because of his funeral. Maybe it was knowing that when I was up there, I, I felt a piece of him in me. And then maybe it was knowing that as much as I hate it, you know, he's there, in me. I, I am him, in some ways. And it just... It just was too much to bear. It, it hurt. It hurt a lot. But, I mean, you should know, he, he loved you, Quinn. He, he really cared about you. No, no, no. Get out of here, Vince. He... He really didn't. He, I mean, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. He, he cared about you more than anybody, pretty much. I mean, I should know. I wanted what you and him had. But maybe it was knowing that if he wasn't a good father, then he was just a horrible person. Thankfully, I was wrong about that. I was wrong about a lot of different things, but he was too. I just... It's like a... It's like Dad used to say whenever something would go wrong and he couldn't fix it. He'd just shrug his shoulders and he'd go. Everything's gonna be okay. Right? You know, uh, Eddie's doing a little, little thing on Friday, a little housewarming party because he just moved in with me. Oh, shit. Good yeah, for him. Yeah, I know. What oh, is it's, it? It's like Friday, I said, but, oh. you know. Yeah. I mean, Bailey's going to be there. Um, Brenna Hopkins is going to oh, be there. Oh, God, Vince. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. But, uh. You should come. Yeah. I mean... I'll, I'll totally show up. 
it would be it'll be you know great to see you there yeah all right i'm gonna head out i've got stuff to do yeah same here yeah but you know it's uh it's great seeing you yeah i hope to see you friday man yeah hope to see you friday i love you brother i love you too quinn Jamie, my guy. Hey, Quinn. How's it going, man? I mean, after the funeral. I heard it was pretty weird. <laughs> weird. That's the understatement of the century, but I'm doing all right. All right. Here's your phone. Oh, thank you. Here you go. Thanks. How's it working? Should be fine after I tweaked a few things. Well, thanks, Jamie, for getting my phone fixed. Yeah, no problem. Oh, uh, by the way, here's your hat. <laughs> this isn't my hat. Two dads. It's my dad's? Yeah, guess he must have left it here. <laughs> you look just like him. Yeah, uh, yeah, just, just like him. Oh yeah, some guy named Charlie kept on calling you. Ch Charlie? Yeah, he left a bunch of messages. Oh. Hey Quinn, I, I just heard the news. I'm flying over tonight uh, and I will be there you tomorrow You know, Jamie, I, I think I should Hopefully be leaving now. Quinn, you okay? Call me when you get yeah, this. I'm, I'm fine. Hey, are you there? Quinn. I'm not sure, uh, Quinn. I think I'm having sure why I'm having so much trouble reaching about you. This. Not sure it's been so long about this. this. Let me know, hey, I want to say you're your dad. Something going on. I have uh, it I hope I even can set the finish today. Now. I don't think I have the right number. I'm just worried about the status. I tried. Okay, this is a good thing. Hey, it's me. I'm not coming. I don't think I'm ready to come back. Not now. Maybe not ever. Hey Quinn, it's me again. Things must be completely crazy for you right now. I understand if you don't want to talk to me, I just... I wanted to tell you something that I was thinking about yesterday. And I, I bet you don't even remember this, but... When you were little, your dad, my brother, was planning on taking you out of school on a fishing trip extravaganza or something. I told him that probably wasn't the best idea, but he was pretty insistent on it. He was really excited about it, the most excited I'd heard of in a long time, about anything really. He was like, oh, I can't wait for this. I mean, he's going to love it. I'm going to be a real dad. I remember hearing that and just crying about it for a while. He really cared about you more than, more than he cared about anyone. He'd always tell me about how he thought he'd mess things up with Eddie and Vince, but he didn't want to with you. If there's anyone that should know this, it's you. I'm not one to quote my brother because he's a moron. Believe me, I know. But I wanted to say what I'm about to say because I know, well, I know it's what he would say to you right about now. 
Everything is going to be okay. Thank you.